Several bones need to fuse to form a complete hard pellet. If we look on the developing uh, upper jaw, the maxilla, we would notice that the, in the midline there is a single bone called intermaxilla or premaxilla and on both sides we got the right and the left maxilla. They will fuse to form the the arc of the upper jaw. So if this is the right side and left side, this is the right maxilla, the left maxilla, and in the midline there is a so-called inter maxilla. Uh, it has more names or also pre-maxilla and it becomes the incisive bone from which the incisors will grow and from the perspective of the palate it's uh, called the primary palate the first part of the palate However, these uh, maxillary, uh, the, the, the ref left and right maxilla, they, they grow and they are sending more material to fill this gap in the midline. In this gap, we would be able to observe the nasal septum in the midline, because we will see through the uh, non-existing palate into the nasal cavity. So this will be the nasal septum. As a consequence, the premaxilla will fuse with the maxilla, and more, and they will they will form these palatal shelves that will meet in the midline, they will approach each other until they fuse in the midline. So this is the right maxilla, the left maxilla. These are the Palatal shelves. Growing to meet in the midline. This is the still the primary palate, the intermaxilla. And uh, the outcome uh, is that we got the, the incisive bone. the maxilla and a completely fused secondary palate with the palatal raffae in the midline and the incisive foramen here. So finally we got the incisive bone the maxilla, both maxilla, right and left, uh, the incisive foramen, and the newly appeared clo completely closed secondary palate, 
made of the uh, palatal processes of the maxilla. And in the midline there is the palatal raffae showing the line of fusion of these uh, palatal processes. Uh, this was like the view, uh, the bottom-up view so if you were if you were looking uh, looking uh, in on the roof of the oral cavity into the nasal cavity. From the uh, perspective of a frontal section it would look approximately like this. We would see the uh, the nasal cavity with the nasal septum And then the region of the maxilla, with the um, with the palatal processes that are at first directly somehow more caudally. In between, there is a tongue. There is a tongue that prevents these two, these palatal processes from fusion. So if this the, is the nasal septum, the nasal cavity, left, right and left, here is the region where the maxilla the, uh, ossifies via desmogenous ossification and sends these palatal shelves or palatal processes. The maxilla originates from the first pharyngeal arch, by the way, as the mandible does. And we can see it's sending the uh, palatal processes that are diverted somehow in the caudal direction. Here is the mouth cavity or the oral cavity and this is the tongue. Now the tongue needs to undergo some descent. Uh, it goes down, uh, which it's pulled down by the growth of the mandible. and the floor of the mouth cavity and it pulls the tongue down. Therefore the palatal shelves can can like straight uh, become straight and meet in the midline which will be shown on the next scheme where the nasal cavity the nasal septum and the completely closed palate where both the left and right palatal processes of the maxilla will fuse with the nasal septum and with each other therefore completing the separation of the mouth and the oral cavity so this is the nasal septum nasal cavity and this is the fusion of secondary palate. So the same process is here but from different perspective. The mouth is now has moved downwards to the oral cavity.
so the tongue is pulled downwards by the groove of the mandible and this is the mouth cavity unfortunately this process uh, is not always successful either on both sides I will only make a bl uh, grayscale schemes showing you uh, bilateral um, cleft palate where neither of the both palatal shelves will reach the midline and fuse so this will be a bilateral uh, cleft palate A more sophisticated word for the cleft palate used in medicine is palatoschisis. Or it could be on one side only, so one of the palatal shelves will close the hard palate on its side, but the opposite one will fail to do so. That would be unilateral palatoschisis. And uh, also the f there could be failure in the in the growth of uh sorry in the fusion between the incisive bone and the maxilla. In this case only in black and white or grayscale scheme. with incisive foramen. In this case, if there will be lack of fusion here, you can call it, uh, between the incisive bone and the maxilla, you may call it uh, the cleft jaw. So this is the maxilla, right? And this is the incisive bone. If they don't fuse, there is a gap in the jaw called cleft jaw or gnathoschisis. So lack of fusion between maxilla and incisive bone. And if there is lack of fusion between these two palatal processes, then there is a gap in the midline a communication between the mouth and oral cavity and you call it as you know cleft palate or palato schisis here is the incisive foramen sometimes it's also when, when the birth defects are being reported it's also referred as to uh, anterior cleft palate when it's anterior to the incisive foramen and posterior cleft palate when it's posterior to incisive foramen. So watch the terminology you you, you will be using. Uh, this gnathoschisis, gnathos the, the cleft jaw, could be also on one side or on both sides. So uni or bilateral. Unfortunately, these defects could be combined into a gnatopolatoschisis, right? Should the, that be the case. So the complete closure of heart palate requires fusion of incisive bones with the maxilla and the palatal shelves. It's necessary for producing the negative pressure in the mouth cavity in the uh, suckling um, 
infant.